Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. And this is a really interesting clip here. I'm guessing this is from maybe the movie Greenland. I don't know. It looks to me like it's a movie. I, I was trying to figure out, is this legit? I don't think it is. However, at the same time, we might end up seeing something like this. Yeah, we might. It kind of feels like it, it could come true. Yeah, and what what Cynthia had gotten before was, and I don't think we mentioned it clearly in yesterday's video, um, as far as getting the, the downloads from the Galactics, is that the likelihood that we're going to see a lot of things in the sky coming down. Uh, let's just leave it at that. And September is very high, although perhaps not you know the big destructive things that a lot of people are thinking. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking the timeline feels like it's shifted, so things might not be as severe as they could have been. Yeah, and shifting the timeline in a positive way would be a great thing. As we know, you know, there's so much going on right now that's trying to bring everybody's energies down. It feels like there's a lot more direct attacks on people uh, going on by these these darker energies. And then, of course, we have all the chaos, which is just, it's growing. It is growing, and, you know, it's important to recognize that not everything is the way it seems sometimes. Oh, not at all. Not at all. And so on the first channel, I had a uh, video that they removed. Uh, YouTube decided to remove because it violated the community standards. You could still see it on Brightian and BitChute. Um, and that's what we got to simply do. We have to just shift over to other sources as the censorship ramps up. Now, this is something in Australian skies, and we've seen these before. You know, it's it's pretty color, actually, isn't it? Um, now, whether or not this is just a meteor coming in or something else, I don't know. What's your feeling? You know, my feeling on this one is it's a, it's a meteor. Okay, so you think this is a, a legitimate meteor. We've seen a lot of them, an awful lot. And then when we go and we take a look at RT, you see NASA warns of 25 meter diameter asteroid close flyby this week with two even bigger space rocks to follow soon after. You know, this has been a huge buzz. Everybody is looking to the sky and, and wondering, you know, what's going to happen. Will asteroid 2011 ES4 hit Earth? No! Exclamation point. Its close approach is close on an astronomical scale, but poses no danger of actually hitting Earth. It's going to safely pass by by at least 45,000 miles. You know, that that is a close call, though. I mean, if you're talking about, like, some of the other ones that are coming by, uh, and, you know... There's a lot of fear-mongering going on in certain papers. Uh, and then you find out they're millions of miles away. That's not close. 45,000 miles is pretty close when you get to it, it down to it when you're talking about in the distance of, a sol of the uh, solar system. So on September 1st, a 25-meter, three London buses end-to-end, -end, and a 28-meter, one and a half times the length of a bowling lane, asteroids are charted to fly by at a distance of 2.9 million and 121,000 kilometers per, respectively. And again, that's massive dif distance difference there. So, you know, the, US, <laughs> the NASA, never a straight answer, you know, they're saying, don't worry, it's okay. Not, nothing to worry about. Again, the moon is 384,000 kilometers away. Uh, so, you know, nothing to worry about. Yet there's such a buzz going on, as we talked about uh, Israeli new li uh, News Live, talking all about his sources. Seems like people are expecting something to happen. And so, as if a 1-2 combo of cosmic proportions wasn't enough, the very next day, a 13-meter diameter 2020 PG-6 is due to fly past harmlessly, at a relatively safe distance of 2.2 million kilometers. The breathing room will, will be much appreciated, given how 2020 has gone so far. Yeah, most definitely. And then to close out the week, you're going to have the grand finale, 150-meter behemoth, half the height of the Eiffel Tower, 
labeled 2010 FR, is expected to shoot past us at a distance of 7.4 million kilometers. So that's still far away. So you can see there, there's quite a bit of activity, though. We, there, we definitely have a lot of uh, activity going on. And uh, many people believe it's because of Planet X Nibiru. Yeah, a lot of people do believe that. And there could be something to it. You know, I haven't studied it that deep, but it seems plausible. And then on September 8th, you have asteroid 2020 PT4. That's 35 meters in diameter going by at 1.8 million kilometers. So what will September bring, guys? We're almost in September. It's the last day of August. It feels like there's a lot of breath holding going on right now, doesn't it? It, it really does, yeah. So the Schumann is really not doing much. Uh, the Schumann's pretty quiet right now, but I just thought we'd take a peek at that. But what we've seen is a little bit of an increase over here in geomagnetic activity, you know, because we haven't really gotten a lot of these yellow bars where the KP index gets up to a 5 or higher. Not that it's strong, but again, in these times, everything is getting more amplified. So we are starting to see uh, some activity going on where we haven't seen it before. And we've seen some interesting earthquakes lately. We have a 6.2 that shakes the Indian Ocean 20 hours after a 6.5 hit the central mid-Atlantic ridge. So you see how these are lining up. So within the last 20 hours, two strong quakes struck remote regions across the world. And, you know, if you, follow, if you watch Dutch, you know, you, you know energy transfers. And you can see this is going from one side of a plate to another. It's pretty clear. It's an energy transfer. So... Um, I would probably keep my eyes open Indonesia and, and maybe even the Philippines uh, for some activity there. And then we get this uh, ore fish, which this is thought to be a harbinger. When you see these things dead on the beach, a harbinger of big quakes coming. Because perhaps, you know, there's toxic gases being released down in the ocean as, as you have this activity going on. And so it's something to be aware of increase in the um in the kp index so here we see this one over in the indian ocean they just took this one off but it was right here that's an aftershock this is the last 24 hours so again look over into indonesia perhaps uh for some activity over there or even perhaps over into the philippines and uh we we do have we had seven the last time I, I was peaking. Yeah, seven. Seven quakes over in this area around Sparta still. So there's still leftover activity from that other quake we had the other day. And we have one right on the border here, Teleco Plains, Tennessee. And we have a lot of the usual activity, fracking quakes over in Oklahoma City and tons of fracking over here in western Texas as well. As we've been through that area, and we see again, just like yesterday, there's a lot of activity going on around the San Andreas and the San Jacinto, Ridgecrest, still over in Tonopah, heading up towards the geysers. You know, all the same typical activity that we have seen. And we have severe storms with giant hail and tornadoes hitting northern Italy, leaving at least four people dead. And they brought lightning, giant hail, and tornadoes over the weekend, causing significant material damage, leaving at least four dead. It, we've seen this in so many areas. Look at that. Yeah. The hail looks like you had a snowstorm in the summer. But we are heading towards the fall now. And what will the fall bring? You know, we just don't know. Every year it's a little bit different, so it'll be curious to see. And so we have Typhoon Maysak approaching Okinawa on its way towards the Korean Peninsula. This is the ninth storm that, of the 2020 Pacific Typhoon season as far as named storms. And uh, on August 29th, it was upgraded to Typhoon and as of 2100 UTC into a Category 2 storm. So again, and we will be watching the activity over in the, the Caribbean for sure. Meltwater from shrinking glaciers continuing to create vast lakes that could pose enormous flooding threat. So it's like we're getting close to this tipping point in so many different ways. 
And we had talked about uh, Dr. Zarkova saying, you know, we're officially now, you know, in the new Grand Solar Minimum. And, you know, she's expecting it to last a long time, you know, and be very, very similar to the Mondry Minimum. At some point, well, we, we have all these big, big swings in temperature, but at some point we're going to start to trend, according to these theories, towards the colder and colder and colder. Right now we're just getting enormous swings either way, and we see the temperatures caught some people up in Scotland by surprise as the temperature plummeted, and they were out hiking, and then they are starting to suffer from exposure, and they had to be rescued. So be aware of the changes and everything. Thankfully, it's not quite the day after tomorrow scenario yet. Rare and surprise snowfall on Cape Town. This is in South Africa. So they're opening up uh, basically ski resorts and things like that early. And we see people line up in record numbers at Alameda County Food Bank. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of things going into this. Most definitely the shutdown, which is really impacting people on such a huge level just wiping out so many mom and pop small businesses and you know it's isn't it so curious that some of the very very biggest companies have made a killing during this whole crisis they've actually made record profits during this crisis isn't that a curious thing hmm. never let a good crisis go to waste exactly Five things to do when martial law is declared. And, you know, there's so many things going on right now. As, as we said, it feels today almost like the whole world's just kind of hanging on and holding its breath a little bit. Um, there's so many situations like the India-China situation going on, which is apparently escalating again. And then, of course, you know, we have everything that's going on in this country, w which... If you just, just look at the headlines, it can be so disconcerting. So, again, we have to prepare as best we can. We have to remove ourselves from dangerous situations as best as possible. What we have gotten uh, as far as from the channeling is to, you know, the government said have six months supply of food and maybe a year is better, if not more. Try to be as self-sufficient as possible. There could come a time where you're not going to even step out your door for for a prolonged period of time yeah there you know so we need to be ready for that so how martial law is defined the ranking military officer in command of the forces on the ground will become the head of civilian government for the duration oh that's what you saw i saw something like that that is what she saw when we had shared with you before uh, that she was saying it wasn't going to be President Trump in control. It wasn't going to be Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, or Mike Pence. So a martial law situation can manifest this. So I wonder who the ranking military officer in command of forces on the ground is. Because uh, Chad Wolf looks a lot like the person that she saw. Um, it may not be him, but he does look a lot like the person that she saw when they were saying this is going to be the person that's actually in charge uh, after the whole election thing happens or doesn't happen. <laughs> so uh, here we have posse committatus and this is the one law that limits the president's ability to declare martial law and in 1878 Congress passed the Posse Comitatus Act which forbids U.S. military involvement in do domestic law enforcement without congressional approval. Yet we've actually seen that, have we not? Yes, we have. Yeah. Habeas corpus, that's a significant clause in the application of martial law, is the suspension of habeas corpus. And that is the right requiring a person under arrest to be brought before a judge or into a courtroom if they feel they've been unlawfully detained. Under martial law, a U.S. citizen may be detained with no explanation for why and no recourse through a typical court of law. And actually, a lot of that's already going on, too, with people in certain spots like Gitmo. Um, 
A brief history, martial law occurs with some frequency around the world, but its occurrence on a national level is relatively rare in the U.S., though it has been declared on a state and local level 70 times between 1847 and 1945. The most extreme imposition of martial law occurred during the Civil War. At that time, Abraham Lincoln enacted the following. He suspended the writ of habeas corpus without the consent of Congress. He shut down newspapers whose writers displayed any dissent to Union policy or spoke out against him. He raised troops without the consent of Congress. He closed courts by force. He imprisoned citizens, newspaper owners, and elected officials without cause and without a trial. As a historical precedent, it has led to many of the current fears surrounding the concept of martial law. And it gives you some things that could provoke it. Obviously, home, <laughs> I was going to say homemade disasters, you know, man-made disasters, widespread rioting, terrorism, of course. All, All these, these things, things could, could cause it. Um, you, you know, know everything, everything we're seeing right now could. could. And the five rights you surrender under martial law. First Amendment rights, gone. Second Amendment rights, gone. They might actually round up firearms, take them away. Um, Third Amendment, freedom from housing soldiers, that could go too. And they might, again, uh, just like say, hey, you, know, you have a wonderful, wonderful uh, property here. You have great gardens going. You have fruit trees going. Uh, you have a ton of food. Uh, we need it for our soldiers. And they just come on in, and this happened back in the Revolutionary War, um, and it's happened other times as well. So they could just take over your property, take everything you have. Protection from unreasonable search and seizure is gone, and also protection to life, liberty, and property. So they, they could take over anything. So this is something seriously to realize and be prepared for. Um, as we head into the next, you know, next period of time, the end of this year. So it gives you some other uh, things to think about, like auditing your supplies and your preparations. Um, which is a thought, do you know exactly what you have there? And maybe you don't have as much of one item and, and it's still available right now. Maybe you could go get it. Uh, maybe you realize that you bought 200 pounds of beans and that's going to last you 10 years or 20 years. Uh, yet you don't have enough rice or you don't have enough whatever. Uh, it's, it's important to take stock and know what you have, assess your situation. You know, and maybe you thought you had a great little neighborhood, but it's already seeing people having fist fights and things getting broken out there. It, it, everything is changing. Uh, solidify your relations with your neighbors, work together, and try to also have plans in place that everything shuts down where you guys could support each other. You know, perhaps there's some skills and things that you have and your neighbor has more supplies, maybe you could work together. Uh, that's, that's really what it's going to take. And think about bug out options. Uh, get together with other people as well. Have multiple bug out locations in mind in case you have to leave for you know, whatever reason. Stay informed as much as you can. At some point, we'll probably lose the grid. And we'll probably lose the ability to communicate. And, and then it's going to be much, much tougher. Be the gray man. Don't stick out. So, I mean, if you do have, you know, the best of everything as far as, you know, like the best garden, the best property and things like that, it will stick out, you know, as opposed to something that was rather mundane or even a little bit, you know, maybe a little run down looking might actually end up saving you in the long run. Um, and then we're going to jump over here and talking about our reality and what is really real. I mean, we've seen so many things spotted on the face of Mars. And here you have something spotted on the face of Venus that doesn't look to be natural. And so Scott C. Waring is showing these uh, pictures here saying, hmm, does that look like it could be a human face there? Or does that look like a totally natural phenomenon? What's your thoughts? You know, it looks like it's, it is some sort of a building that's getting uncovered slowly. Yeah, our history, again, is not what we've been told. And, you know, again, we've never been alone. There's always been other beings around us. They're around us all the time. Swedish scientists successfully swap bodies in a bizarre experiment, changing participants' perception of themselves. 
And as you see here, they're hooked up. And they created an out-of-body experience in which they swapped participants' bodies, drastically changing their perceptions of themselves, while also interfering with their ability to make memories. A team from Brain, Body, and Self Laboratory, led by Henrik Ersson, took 33 pairs of friends and swapped their bodies using VR headsets, which allowed participants to see themselves in their friends' body. Body swapping is not a domain reserved for science fiction movies anymore, said neuroscientist Powell Tagakowski from the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. The team also included a tactile element to the experiment so the participants could feel what they saw in their goggles, similar to 4D cinema experiences. Pushing the experiment even further, when one participant was threatened with a prop knife, the other would break out in a sweat showing just how far the disassociation could go, even in a limited time frame. Before, during, and after the minutes-long experiments, the participants were asked to rate both themselves and their friend on a number of personality traits, such as talkativeness, cheerfulness, independence, and confidence. The answers changed dramatically over the course of the experiment. So we show that the self-concept has the potential to change really quickly, which brings us to some potentially interesting practical implications. And so he said that those living with depression often have what he called rigid and negative beliefs about themselves, which can greatly inhibit their everyday lives. But with a slight alteration of this illusion, it can have profound effects on these apparently intractable ideas of self. The researchers think the research might one day open doors into several depersonalization disorders, including schizophrenia, and potentially provide novel treatment options. Curiously, the participants also performed worse than memory tests carried out shortly after they took part in the body swap, as if their memories were fading along with the sense of self, however briefly. Isn't that fascinating? That it really, really is. I really love that. I want to read into that more later. Yeah, so, you know, just think about the amnesia we get when we leave one body and go into another body and, and experience another life. And there again, we are not the body. We're not the body. You know, we are in a body. Our consciousness is inhabiting a body. You know, but where does our consciousness go when we sleep? You know, there's it out and about on the astral realm, having its, having other experiences you know, this is fascinating stuff, but, you know, the great truth is that we are consciousness itself having an experiment and experience as a human in this 3D reality, which is rapidly changing before us. I want to thank everybody for your support over at Patreon and also on Ko-Fi, as we could not do it without your support there. Um, and as I said, they removed uh, a video from the first channel. As we know, like people like David Icke is no longer on YouTube as everything keeps increasing. So, you know, we can't do it without you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Stay prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.